गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर दादामिया पी एम डी शेख प्रोफेसर एंड हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स लॉर्ड्स इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी टूडे आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस अबाउट पी एन जंक्शन एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन द आउटलाइन ऑफ टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन इंक्लूड्स इंट्रोडक्शन टू बैंड थियरी properties of semiconductors intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors n type and p type semiconductors fermi level formation of a pn junction characteristics of a pn junction diode and its applications these are the outlines of presentation band theory is a very important before we step into formation of a pn junction every atom consists of nucleus around which the electrons are revolving in their own energy levels and they have different energy levels for an isolated atom the energy levels are isolated and for a group of atoms the energy levels are grouped when we talk about the solids we have n number of atoms close to each other hence the energy levels become group of energy levels and we get the energy bands here you can see in case of two atoms the energy levels of one atom and other energy levels of another atom when they come closer the energy levels do not mix instead they split each other these are the two energy levels of two atoms and these are the two energy levels of the two atoms in case of three atoms when they come closer the energy level becomes three energy levels and imagine if there are n number of atoms each energy level split into n number of energy levels and we call it as energy band and so if you take a isolated atom the energy levels are isolated and this is the formation of energy bands for convenience we show the energy bands in this form the completely filled energy levels do not involve in electrical processes the energy band which contain valence electrons we call valence band and the energy band which contains conduction electrons we call conduction band and there is difference between the valence band and conduction band we call it as energy gap and that is shown very clearly here so we mainly focus on the band which contains valence electrons the band which contains conduct conduction electrons and the gap or the energy difference between these two bands we call it as energy gap and this diagram helps us to understand the energy band structure of all the materials and particularly for semiconductors we will see how it is look at the energy band diagram for different materials for metals the both bands overlap with each other and so all the valence electrons acts as a conduction electrons they conducts electricity and for materials the valence band and conduction band separated with a huge energy difference they do not conduct electricity we call it as non conductors or insulators the materials whose energy band structure where they separated with a moderate energy difference neither conductors nor insulators so these materials we call semiconductors and these semiconductors have energy gap between the conductors and insulators apart from that the conductivity of the semiconductors depends on temperature and also depends on impurities and they have electrons and holes or the charged carriers these two properties are very important for conductors that makes difference between other materials the conductivity increases with temperature and also increases with impurities this is the beauty of semiconductors
If you look the band based on the number of atoms that a semiconductor contain, the semiconductors are classified into two types, elemental semiconductors which contain only one type of atom, compound semiconductors which contain more than one atom and based on band structure, we have two types of semiconductors, direct band gap semiconductor and indirect band gap semiconductor and based on the impurities, the semiconductors classified into two types, pure and impure semiconductors and we also name them as intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. So this is the broad classification of a semiconductors based on different parameters like based on atoms we have elemental and compound semiconductors, based on band structure we have direct and indirect band gap semiconductors and based on impurities we have pure and impure semiconductors or intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors and we focus on pure and impure semiconductors as we are going to discuss about a pn junction diode formation their p and n semiconductors or extrinsic semiconductors and this is elements in periodic table which comes under the example semiconductors so the pure semiconductors belong to fourth group elements like silicon and germanium and by adding third and fifth group elements we get compound semiconductors by adding second and sixth group elements so we get compound semiconductors this belongs to elemental semiconductors which contain only silicon or germanium atoms by adding third and fifth group elements we get compound semiconductors like aluminium nitrate gallium phosphate and these are form a direct band gap structure so they come under example for direct band gap semiconductor by adding second and sixth group elements like zinc oxide cadmium sulfate we get compound semiconductors and they come under example for indirect band gap semiconductors based on the band structure and now for a pure semiconductor how the band structure present and how a pure crystal structure is present let us discuss and it is a silicon crystal which has a silicon atoms arranged regularly and periodically and so it belongs to fourth group elements every silicon atom has four valence electrons and these four valence electrons of silicon form covalent bonds with the nearest four silicon atoms hence all the valence electrons of silicon under covalent bonds we do not find any free electron at absolute zero kelvin this case i am talking at absolute zero kelvin we find plenty of valence electrons but no free electrons or conductual electrons and if you look at the band structure it contains a filled valence band as all the electrons are valence electrons and empty conduction band as no conduction electrons or free electrons are present and the energy difference between conduction and valence band in case of a pure silicon is about 1.12 electron volt now this band structure and structure of the semiconductor changes by adding impurities suppose if i add trivalent impurity to this pure semiconductor instead let me tell you if i add a pentavalent impurity then arsenic atom one of the example for pentavalent element and this arsenic atom occupy the place of a silicon atom and as it contains five electrons in its outermost shells four of them form covalent bonds with the nearest four silicon atoms the other a fifth electron remains in its outermost energy levels this i'm talking at absolute zero kelvin and so we do not get free electrons even after adding impurities to pure semiconductors as the valence electrons still in valence shells and for this the valence band is completely filled and conduction band is completely empty and here a separate energy level is drawn 
to show the impurity energy level and here the dots in this energy level shows the impurities we added so depending on the number of impurities we add that will shown here and this is the donor energy and this is the lowest energy level of conduction band and this is the highest energy level of valency band so this is the band structure of a extrinsic semiconductor after adding pentavalent impurity and in case of zero kelvin temperature you don't get any kind of electrons in conduction band and now you need to apply this amount of energy which is equals to ec minus ed in order to get the electrons in conduction band so instead of breaking the covalent bonds like in case of pure semiconductors just by giving a small temperature we can release this valence electron of arsenic and we can have conduction electrons and so at above zero kelvin we get more number of electrons in conduction band as they are the majority carriers we call this semiconductor as n type semiconductor on the other hand if we add trivalent impurity every trivalent impurity occupy the place of a pure silicon and as it contains three valence electrons three of them forms covalent bond and remaining aluminium if i take an example that aluminium as it does not have the other valence electron it attracts the valence electron of silicon in order to attain stability and becomes negatively charged and a vacancy of electron is created in a pure crystal as this impurity attracts one electron of pure crystal it creates one vacancy inside the pure crystal by converting a positively charged and that vacancy we call it as a hole hole is nothing but a vacancy of electron and now for this structure valence band is completely filled as uh, all the electrons are in covalent bonds and conduction band is still empty and now by giving the bit temperature aluminium that is trivalent impurity attracts electron of arsenic so we show the energy level of these impurities nearby valence band as they attract the valence electrons of pure silicon crystal so we show it very close to the valence band on the other hand we have shown the energy level of pentavalent impurities near to conduction band as they are ready to release electron to the conduction band and here they are ready to take the valence electron from the pure crystal so it is very close to the valence band and once it attracts the electron of pure crystal it creates a hole in valence band and self become positively charged and so in this way the holes are created in valence band as it attracts electron it becomes i'm sorry negatively charged because uh, one more electron increase in trivalent impurity this is how a p type semiconductor is formed and now as i told hole is a vacant site of electron and we treated it as a positively charged and the moment of hole we consider in the direction opposite to the moment of electron now another important parameter we discuss is a fermi level a fermi level is a reference energy level and it corresponds to the number of electrons and holes in conduction band and valence band respectively at absolute zero kelvin as uh, there is uh, no holes and electrons in valence and conduction band the level we show exactly in the middle of two energy bands and when we apply the temperature the number of holes and electrons are same in valence band and conduction band at that time also the fermi level exactly in the middle of the two energy bands telling that on both sides the number of carriers are same so that is indicated with the fermi level so i told the fermi level is a reference level to indicate or to denote the carrier concentration on both the bands 
as the both bands contain same number of carriers at any temperature so for pure semiconductor we show the Fermi level exactly in the middle of the two bands now in case of a p-type semiconductor as we add trivalent impurities then the donor sorry acceptor energy level it is close to the valency band and the Fermi level is close to the valency band since the majority carriers are holes and so please note the Fermi level comes close to the valency band since the majority carriers are holes but when we apply the temperature look here this is the condition at absolute zero kelvin and here this red line indicates the Fermi level for pure semiconductor it should remain in the middle but for a p-type semiconductor as the majority carriers are holes it comes close to the valency band indicating that more number of holes are present and now when i apply the temperature here then apart from the holes due to the injection of impurities there is a possibility of breaking of covalent bonds and the electrons as well as the holes are created with increase in temperature by keeping the doping concentration constant the more number of carriers increase in conduction band of course in valence band in that case the Fermi level slowly shift towards the conduction band indicating that there are electrons when you apply the temperature to the pure or to the extrinsic semiconductor so that is how the shifting of fermi level takes place depending on the impurities and depending on the temperature so these two play a very important role in order to decide the number of carriers and also the conductivity of semiconductors by which the fermi level is dynamic or it changes its place if you look at the position of fermi level in antap semiconductor as it is close to the conduction band where more number of electrons are present in antap semiconductor and when you apply the temperature then as i just told the covalent bonds break and holes also start coming in the valence band and the concentration of holes increase with increase in the temperature so the fermi level instead of here it slowly shift towards the middle indicating that concentration of holes also increasing with applied temperature this is a very important concept for a pure semiconductor the fermi level always lies in the middle of two energy bands for a n-type semiconductor it is close to the conduction band for a p-type semiconductor it is close to the valence band on the other hand the closeness of fermi level to the conduction valence band depends on the concentration of impurities if you increase the pentavalent impurities then more number of electrons increase hence it go closer and closer sometimes it lies within the conduction band such a n-type semiconductor we call heavily doped n semiconductor we denoted with n plus similarly in case of p semiconductor with increase in impurities the Fermi level lies within the valence band and we name it as heavily doped p-type semiconductor or p plus semiconductor now that is about the basic idea of forming the pure and intrinsic or extrinsic semiconductor p-type and n-type now how a p-n junction is formed from a p and n semiconductors it's a very important concept as it is related to all the budding engineers every electronic devices is made up of a pn junction diode so formation of a pn junction is a very important concept and be careful and let us uh, discuss it and as here p indicates P type semiconductor and indicates n type semiconductor so i told you how we get a p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor once again before step into this a p type semiconductor is formed 
by adding the trivalent impurities to a pure semiconductor where it creates a hole and itself becomes negatively charged we call it as acceptor ion and as the majority carriers are holes so we call the positively type semiconductor or p type semiconductor on the other hand for a pure semiconductor if you add a pentavalent impurity each impurity donates electron to the pure crystal and itself becomes positively charged ion so we call it as a donor ion and since electrons are the majority carriers here we name the semiconductor as negatively type semiconductor or n type semiconductor finally when we have a p and n type semiconductor after adding the impurities if we join them we will get a p n junction but physical joining is not possible that create discontinuities near the joining point so to avoid that we take a pure semiconductor and we add trivalent impurities on one side and pentavalent impurities on other side so the side where we add trivalent impurities they the majority carriers are holes the side where we add pentavalent impurities where majority carriers are electrons so we treat this side as a p type and the other side as n type semiconductor as the majority carriers are holes on one side due to the concentration difference these holes move from higher concentration to lower concentration similarly the electrons move from higher concentration to lower concentration and this we call it as a diffusion of carriers and this diffusion continues and the electron hole meet at one place and that place we call it as a junction in general a junction is a meeting point here the electron hole meet the point where electron hole meet we call it as a pn junction and at that point when electron hole meet it becomes neutral and they leave their immobile ions you can see here the electrons leave the positive ion near the junction and hole leaves negative ion near the junction because the existence of hole and electron is due to the impurities and that impurity is present near the junction and the recombination of electron and hole becomes neutral and this accumulation of ions increase as the recombination of electron and hole increase and they create a particular potential across this pn junction here so this region once it creates it does not allow any kind of carriers inside it and we call it as a space charge region or if at all any carrier try to enter it does not allow it depletes the carriers and we also need it known, known it as depletion region moment of carriers across the pn junction then we call it as a pn junction and to check its character we need to add metal contacts on both sides of the pn junction and a pn junction with metal contacts on both sides we name it as pn junction diode so pn junction diode is nothing but a pn junction with metal contacts on both sides and this is the symbol of a pn junction we used in circuit diagram and this is the device of a pn junction diode and this arrow shows the flow of current from p type to n type and the bar indicates the existence of depletion region or sometimes we call it as a barrier also as it stops the flow of carriers across it and so this is the symbol we use to denote a pn junction diode in electrical or electronic circuits now when we apply external voltage to a pn junction diode we call it as a biasing the external voltage can be applied in two ways a positive of the battery connected to p type semiconductor negative of the battery connected to n type semiconductor or reverse of that 
Negative of the battery can be connected to p-type semiconductor and positive of the battery can be connected to n-type semiconductor. Depending on how we are connecting the external voltage, there are two type of biasings. The way positive of the battery to p-type, negative of the battery to n-type, we call it as a forward bias. And negative of the battery to p-type, positive of the battery to n-type semiconductor, we call it as a reverse bias. After connecting the external voltage, we will see how the current flows through a PN junction diode that known as IV characteristics of PN junction diode. So now, if you look carefully, when we apply the forward voltage, as long as the forward voltage is less than the barrier voltage, no current flows across the PN junction diode. When the forward voltage just greater than the barrier voltage, then the current starts flowing through the PN junction diode and it does not stop with increasing the forward voltage, it increases exponentially. And during the reverse bias, when we apply the reverse voltage, the direction of reverse voltage and the barrier voltage are same and increasing the barrier voltage, I am sorry, increasing the reverse voltage strengthen the barrier hence the barrier width increases and it does not allow any current across the pn junction in reverse bias so in forward bias it allows the current and it does not allow the current in reverse bias this is what the characteristics of pn junction diode but due to minority carrier injection in reverse bias, a weak or a small current flows across the PN junction diode in order of microampere. So this is the IV characteristics of PN junction diode and we take a forward characteristics in third quad, sorry, first quadrant and reverse characteristics in third quadrant as the current limits are not same in both the biases. So with increase in the forward voltage, how the current changes and it is in order of milliampere and in reverse bias with increase in the reverse voltage, truly theoretically no current flows, but practically due to the minority carrier injection in order of microampere, the current flows. And this PN junction diode is useful in designing rectifiers, switching diodes as I just told, during forward bias, it acts as an on switch. During the reverse bias, it acts as an off switch. And used in xenol diodes, varictar diodes, photodiodes, and light emitting diodes, solar cells, and as well as the lasers, many more. So with these applications, you understand at every time, every moment, we come across with the PN junction diodes in our daily life. So with this, you please uh, once again go through the presentation and you try to understand the extrinsic semiconductors from that how we form a PN junction diode and what is biasing and once you bias how it allows the current in forward bias and it does not allow the current in reverse bias and if you have any doubts after going through the video you can contact through the mail which I have given Thank you. Thank you for listening.